Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout and video to share for Shimmers Paints and I'm going to start this layout with some white cardstock and a beautiful cut file that I got from Just Nick Studio. It's called Poppy Frame and I will link it down below if you want to get your hands on that. And I'm going to base my color scheme today on this beautiful sticker that says colorful from Vicki Booten. I think this is one of her older collections. And here are the five colors that I chose that match it perfectly. I think this is her color kaleidoscope collection. It's not the new one. Uh, I believe it's from a couple of collections ago. But I'm going to go ahead and prep my background paper. This is thick, smooth white cardstock and clear gesso. And I'm just going to smooth it down to kind of uh, go ahead and get the paper ready for any liquids or paints that I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to go over all the colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to basically try to coat the background with all these colors uh, just on where the, the flowers are on that cut file. The first color that I'm going to use is Shimmer's Pip Pip Cherio, probably one of the most beautiful, rich, deep pink colors I've ever seen. It's perfect. I love it. The second color is Shimmer's Wed Wagon, and it's kind of more of a, a red brick color. And this one is Inkling's Old Yeller. Beautiful, golden, really deep and rich yellow color. This one is Inkling's Blue Lagoon. Again, very rich aqua. And then the last one is Shimmer's Iris My Case. And I'm basically just creating a rainbow here um, in these deep, rich colors. And then I'm going to add the pink in again over on the other side. And you can see I'm just scribbling down the color here. This is nothing fancy. I'm going to spritz it with water and then very carefully use a brush to kind of smudge the color around. I'm going to let the water and the colors just kind of do their thing. And the brush is just going to help it kind of smudge around, for lack of a better term. And when these colors blend, I'm going to get some new colors. Um, like when the Iris My Case and the Pip Pip Cheerio blend together, obviously I've got a blue and a pink. It's going to create a little bit of purple, and I think that is so pretty. Um, I'm going to keep dabbing a little bit of it up with my napkin, adding some water. I want some dark areas and some light areas, and I'm just going to play around with it. Um, I want a good chunk of the background colored, and so that's what I'm going to do here. And again, I'm going to try to use all the colors that are in that colorful sticker, and I want all of them to be visible. Uh, the pink started mixing with the green a little bit, so I just dabbed a little bit of that up with my napkin. And that's easy to do if you use gesso. If you have two colors that blend that you don't like, you're able to dab it up pretty quickly without anything being permanent because, you know, the gesso kind of acts as a barrier between all the liquid and the paper and it doesn't dry right away. So you're able to kind of sop some of it up with your napkin if you are, you know, you add too much or it blends and it creates a color that's not what you wanted. So I'm going to keep playing around with this and I already love how it's looking. Um, very, very pretty colors. And I'm going to keep kind of bringing the color down a little bit softer. So I want most of the bold color up at the top and then as it comes down toward the middle of the paper I want it to get softer and lighter and so that's why I keep adding a little bit of water and then just kind of continuing to bring it down a little bit. And I'm only using two different styles of shimmers. The original shimmers are when you get them in the pots, they're already uh, ready to go. All you have to do is mix them up with your brush. And they are extra glittery and shimmery. And when they dry, you'll be able to see it here in a little bit when everything's dry, just how shimmery they are. And the inklings, which are the yellow one and the green one that I'm using, are also shimmery. They're not what I would call glittery. When they dry, they're just, they have this really pretty shimmery, for lack of a better term, finish. And it's just so pretty. So yeah, there's definitely a difference in all the different styles of shimmers in when they dry, how they look. Um, the creamies, which I'm not using today, they have more of a satin finish. So if you're looking for specific finishes, you definitely want to pay attention to the style of shimmers that you're going to use. 
most of the time for me, I like them all and I am not ever really looking for a specific finish. I like all the shimmers. Uh, so I mainly go for the actual color itself. And, you know, um, if you don't want shimmer, there are also shimmers products that are flat color, and those are the colorings, and those are sprays. So, yeah, there's a little bit of everything for everybody. Look at how this is looking. I am so excited. And this, you, you know, I always get a lot of questions about, oh my gosh, this looks so, or not questions, but, but comments about how it looks so complicated. I wish I could do that. How do you do it? It's really just, it's making a mess. I mean, that's all I'm doing. Anybody can do this. Put some gesso on some paper, splatter some paint down, wet it, and then just use a brush to kind of spread it around, you know, let it dry a little bit, add some more, and then the cut file totally transforms it. Look how cool that looks. I mean, you're seeing how this is happening. It's really not hard. You just have to be patient and you have to be willing to take the time to do it. And here's an option if you're not patient, get yourself a heat tool <laughs> or a hair dryer and then just dry it because, you know, sometimes we're impatient. So most of this is dry. Okay, now you can really see the shimmers there. You see the difference in the, uh, like the Pip Pip Cheerio and the blue, the difference in the shimmery factor versus the yellow and the green. It's just a total different shimmer. And, you know, when you add water to these, you do dilute the shimmer a little bit. So just be aware of that. If you want full on shimmer, full on just strictly the paint, you know, don't add water. It's a total uh, preference, you know. Um, I always like to add water because I like that faded watercolor effect, but that's definitely a choice, you know. Um, and the more coats you add of these colors, the, the darker and more bold they're gonna get and the more shimmer you're gonna get, so everybody's different and it just depends on the look you're going for all i'm doing here is going back into some of the colors tapping the brush with my finger really close to the paper to add those little teeny tiny splatters and i'm not done i'm just going to keep working on this background you know me it takes me forever to get a background done so i keep working at it until i get it just like i want it i add some splatters and then i decide to blend them in yeah just keep kind of working at it until I love it. And the splatters are always fun. You can add big splatters. You can add teeny tiny splatters. The little splatters, if you do it like I'm doing there, hold it close to the paper and then tap it really fast with your finger, you're going to get those little teeny tiny splatters. Whereas if you just flick the brush, you're going to get some bigger splatters. And it also depends on how much paint you have on the end of the brush, of course. But um, again, with the gesso, if you don't like how the splatters looked, you can add water and blend them or you can just dab them up. So, all right, so I pretty much have the background done. I am loving how this is looking. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down the cut file. And I wanted to make sure I had it straight since it was a frame. I didn't cut it quite to the edges of the background. And then I'm going to do something kind of crazy. And I'm going to tear the bottom part of it off because I didn't really want the bottom part there. So I just kind of tore it. I think it looks okay in the end. And I didn't want the middle of the flowers to be flat. So the only thing I glued down was the edges of the frame. So I'm going to cut some teeny tiny pieces of some adhesive foam and stick under the middle of some of the flowers so they stay up off the page a little bit. I just want a little bit of dimension. And then I went and stitched just a straight stitch with gold thread around the edges of the frame. I'm going to use this black and white picture today of my daughter. I felt like I wanted to go with black and white since I had all this gorgeous color in the background. And I just, I went through a lot of pictures and I could not find a color photo that I felt went with this. So I just went with a black and white one and I have a ton, you know, if you followed me, you know, I love to scrap pool photos and I have so many of them. I don't think I'll ever run out. So every now and then I will scrap a pool photo in black and white like this one. So, you know, I feel like it's okay. And I definitely, I'm going to use the colorful sticker there because it's got all the colors of the background and I want to angle it kind of like I have it there. I put the photo right where it is because it was a little open area in the cut file and I felt like it was a good spot 
to put the photo, uh, to have the flower on the left kind of overlapping the open space of the photo. And also I wanted it there because in the photo she's looking toward the left. And so I wanted it to look like she's looking across the page. And here I'm just going to start to sort through all of the chipboard stickers, the cardstock stickers, the regular stickers, the die cuts, all from this collection, and start to just play around with things and start to place things here and there. I know I want to use some of the flowers. Um, oh, I don't know if you just heard that. It's thundering. I hope it doesn't knock the power out and I can get this layout finished. Or this video finished because we all know what happens when a thunderstorm rolls in. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start to add in some thread and I pulled in that deep aqua color because I want it to go under the left side of the photo, kind of underneath where that yellow flower is. And I am going to overlap that yellow flower onto the photo. I don't want it too close to her face though, so I'm going to, it's not glued down yet, so I'm going to wind up kind of repositioning it. But uh, I wanted to bring in some of the darker blue thread kind of underneath the photo there. And then I'm going to use a couple of these bird stickers. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the edges of the little white border so it doesn't stand out as much. Sometimes I feel like the white borders on stickers or die cuts kind of just, it makes them look like um, just, I don't know how to describe it. it they, they make them stand out too much, like, like they're glowing or something. And I just want them to kind of blend in. Does that even make sense? It may not. It makes sense to me. And sometimes I want the white border on there. It just depends. It depends on where it's going. It depends on the layout. It depends on the die cut itself and the colors, you know, what is it up against? So I felt like, you know, with the white flowers, uh, the cut file, I had plenty of white um, outlines going on. So, you know, the flowers don't have the white border. Uh, so I didn't want the birds to have the white border. So I'm going to start to glue things down. I'm going to go ahead and glue the picture down because I know that that is where the picture is going. A um, little chipboard piece up at the top, a little tab that says remember this. And then I'm going to add the birds. Now I did put some adhesive foam behind the birds because I wanted them to have a little bit of dimension and pop them up off the page. And then the colorful title is going to go right where it was. And I did add a little chipboard sticker above Colorful that says You Are. And I thought, well, that's a cool title. I don't think I've ever used You Are Colorful as a title. Of all Through all the years of all the layouts that I've made, I surprise myself that sometimes I'm able to come up with a title that I haven't used before. Because it's hard. once When you make so many layouts, you're bound to repeat titles, you know. Um, so I don't think I've ever used You Are Colorful as a title. So I was excited about that. Now I wanted to create a little cluster kind of down on the bottom part of the page here under the title using more of these flowers. And I'm going to pop them all up with some adhesive foam. I've got a, the big pink one, a couple of smaller orange ones, and then that blue one. It's not really a flower. It's more of a scallop circle, but it resembles a flower. So I'm going to use it because of the color. And then I'm going to place a couple other flowers just around the layout. Uh, I didn't want to add too much more to the top part because I wanted the colors of the background and the cut file to really pop. But I am going to add a couple of these smaller flowers here and there. Now in this collection, I didn't have any of the smaller aqua flowers except for on that one cut file. So, or not cut file, die cut. So I just fussy cut some of them off of that one big branch of blue flowers and then scattered those around the page so they were separate and then I played around with how I wanted this little cluster to go down here at the bottom I couldn't I couldn't figure out how I wanted it so I just kind of started to glue down some of the other smaller pieces around the top and then I'm going to come back down here to the bottom and I think that that's how they're going to go. The sticker at the bottom, it, it looks black, but it's that dark blue color. So it matches the U and the L in colorful. I'm going to add some of that deep yellowish orangey colored thread here behind that big pink flower. I just felt like I needed a little bit of something messy down there. So thread is perfect for that. 
And then I'm going to add my journaling right here, kind of under the title and kind of wedge it in around the F and then under the F and by these flowers here. And to make sure it's straight, I'm going to use my T-square ruler and then I'm going to use my black fine tip Sharpie to write in my journaling. And it was kind of tricky because my pen is getting old and I was writing on top of gritty gesso. So my journaling doesn't look that great, but you know, that happens. Uh, over to the right, I decided to add in a couple of little cameras, and there was one on the sticker sheet and then a smaller one on the chipboard sheet. So I'm going to layer both of those together just because I thought they looked cute. And I'm going to pop them up with some thread, and they match perfectly because they've got a little bit of black, which mimics the colors in the photo, but then they've also got that deep pink and the blue color. And yes, I'm trimming off the white edges of a piece of chipboard. I'm crazy. Who knows? It was bugging me. If I trimmed off the edges of everything else, I felt like I needed to trim off that one too, even though it was chipboard. And thank goodness I had those Tim Holtz scissors because, you know, those jokers will cut through anything and <laughs> it trimmed off pretty easily. All right, we're almost done here. I'm just going to add in a couple more little phrase stickers here uh, from this sticker sheet. The one above the title, I think it says, Oh, Hey Girl. And then this one over here, I'm going to trim up and it says this very moment and I am going to glue that down because it's a pretty thin sticker and it definitely was not sticking to the gritty gesso so I make sure to glue everything down and I tried a couple other things I decide not to add anything else over to the side um, I do add a couple more chipboard word phrase stickers over here amongst all those flowers but yeah just those two and I do glue those down and I do add the date off camera but that's it that's the final layout I really love how this turned out I think the color scheme is really pretty and I love that I was inspired by that one sticker you know I was sorting through everything and I saw it and I thought oh what a gorgeous color scheme that's what I'm gonna do and then I just found a cut file that I liked and kind of meshed everything together uh, but here are all the close-ups of all the different colors and the textures the dimension all the different uh, shimmery finishes of all the colors they just look so different when they're when they hit the light so they're really really pretty to play with and I'm gonna link uh, the cut file down below and all of the colors a link in the shimmer store that you can uh, find pretty easily and I'll also have them linked over on the blog post so uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything oh look at that iris my case so so pretty sorry I got distracted by the shimmer um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so, so much for watching.